handles. Okay, most all of the docks just use number three knife handles. These are your Kellys. We have a Kelly. I have a Mayo. Um, I thought I had tonsils. And no Payon in this one. Payon is the next size. So we have this size for Kellys, this size for Mayos, this size for tonsils, although tonsils can go anywhere from here all the way out to this long, okay? Those, those lengths can vary. This is the medium or fine size. Mayos are a little longer, a little heavier. Tonsils are actually the longer but fine. Payon is the same thing, more like a mayo. It's longer. It'll be at least this long. Could be at least about six, eight inches long. Go all the way out to 14 inches, and it will get. It's a bigger, thicker one. It's heavy for heavy grasping, heavy clamping. Okay. We also going down have the same thing. It's smaller and finer. It's a mosquito. Okay. Those are your clamps. Basic clamps. I then have cokers. Cokers have a tooth. Okay. These can be anywhere from 4 inches to 14 inches. They got that tooth. Those are cokers. There is a minor exception that when you have them down about 4 inches and their tips are very, very fine and delicate, they're called ochsners. Those are usually used for very delicate tissue for the um, mucosa on a hysterectomy, and so that's one place we have the ochsners. This is more cokers. You can see the same thing. They're just smaller. Another clamp is your Alice clamp, and if you look from the side, it's curved, and they have these little tiny teeth. Some of them, when they get older, well, these are all good. Some of them, when they're older, the teeth kind of get worn down. Not so good then. You want to have the little teeth right there. So I am grabbing the edge of the tissue and grasping them. So that's, again, a, a fine tissue grasper. Babcock. Babcocks are going around something that's tubular, like a fallope tube, okay? Mm -hmm. We use those always for fallope tubes, but there could be other kind of tubes that they're doing in the body, something that they don't want to crush, so they go okay. around it. Yeah, well, God, hopefully we don't have the ureters freed up too much. Those are usually buried in there, but could be, so you could grab it and sort of move it away. As you're working in the um, groin area, they could be either moving a nerve out of the way or the, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Vas. So that they, when they do a vasectomy, they cut the vas deferens. So you don't want to cut, get anything or crush anything that might have some fluids or tubes, something going through it. You grab and gently put it in there. Okay, needle holders. I have your basic Hagar needle holders, okay? It's just a little bit of serration in there. That helps hold on to the needle so the needle doesn't twist and spin. I've got, what, a five inch, a six inch. But then I go, this is an add-on, this is your Haney needle holder. It's bent. It's, again, serrated here. We use these only in GYN if we're doing hysterectomies. If you're going in to do a vaginal hysterectomy, you go in and you have the needle in there. It's a little tiny hole, the, the vagina, and they're going into work. And so they need to have the needle offset so they can see what they're doing. So this is a needle holder for hysterectomies. This is a long needle holder, and normally this size of needle holder would have a bit much heftier tip, 
These are, oh my goodness, these are delicate ones. These are Huffnagel riders. And see, they have little serrations right on the end here, but look how fine and delicate it is. That's gonna be something down deeper, and because the length of your instrument tells you how far down into the body it is, um, but it's gonna be a very small, tiny needle, small, delicate suture, okay? Uh, I also have Huffnagel riders where this piece is not quite as delicate. But again, that's a vascular needle holder for longer, deeper. These are ringed forceps. Normally what we do is we put a ratex and wrap it around and make a fun sponge forcep of it. So they may also be called sponge forceps. Okay. That would be my other tonsil. And over here, I have a variety of scissors. This is your tissue scissor. It is slender. It's not real heavy. This is for cutting more things that are inside the body rather than the skin or the fascia, which is heavy. This is for the lighter weight tissues, okay? Never ever cut suture with this. It'll dull your scissors, okay? This is a curved mayo. It's exactly the same as this, except it's this one's curved, this one's straight. Curved mayo is used for heavy tissue. Straight mayo is my suture scissors, okay? So they want suture scissors. They want a straight mayo. Mayo scissors come, this is your standard size, but they can come all the way out to like a 12 inch or so. Um, that's again, deep down inside, you still gotta cut some ligaments or cut something that's a little bit heavier, you can cut that. Um, if you're having to cut suture, it's way deep down inside, we have a long straight one, although sometimes they'll use the curved one. Deep down in there, doesn't matter. Morselator. Um, they've just recalled all the morselators. They're now working on it. And what happens is the morselator is put through a trocar, goes into the abdomen. You've just removed the um, uterus or a fibroid, and you want to get it out of the belly. And you're leaving the cervix, so you don't have an opening to take it out of. It's big enough. So this goes through a, I believe, 12 mil millimeter trocar. It goes in, it grabs whatever it is I'm pulling out, and the morselator um, is through another port, and it comes in, and as you're pulling the tissue tight, the morselator is going through and going, heading right through it, and it brings out little tubes of tissue that will fit through the trocars. Okay. It's very cool. Basically, it's how you get something big out of the belly as you chew it up at the little pieces. Mm -hmm. But because there was concern that the blade on that morselator might potentially activate where it shouldn't, although I don't know that it ever has, it hasn't here, they did a recall on them. We have a new one, new battery powered one that we're getting ready to evaluate. But you'll still need to have the morselator graspers to grasp whatever tissue it is that it's trying to morselate. Myoma forcep. The myoma forcep is for going into the uterus and grabbing a polyp, or a myoma is another name for a uterine fibroid, and you try and grab that, and you can try and yank it out. Literally, just tug it, and you're hoping that as you tug it, as it tears, it shreds the vessels if there's anything, any blood supply there so it doesn't bleed. Then you go back in and check and see if you need to cauterize on your inside. But this are myoma forceps to go grab it. As you can see, it's skinny and long to get deep inside the uterus. Okay. That's what that mm -hmm. is. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, we, now we have to get to the forceps. This is your six inch your six inch toothed forcep. 
Okay? It's a, a tissue forcep. I also have a six inch smooth forcep. This forcep is for packing. As you grab something and you stick it in, and, and it does have some serration so you can grab something, but on the other hand, there's no tooth, so it's not gonna be a hefty grabber of tissue or anything. Rarely do we use that one. We do use the tooth forcep a lot, especially um, on the fascia or skin. For um, closing, stuff like that. Well, for closing, for closing as we're coming out, if just before we get to the skin again, for the fascia, we might use that one. Or you're going to use this one. Again, it's heavy. That is your Ferris Smith, otherwise known as the weapon. Doctors will say, give me the weapons. This is the Ferris Smith. When you get to the skin, you're going to grab these. There's two, three teeth, one here, two there. Okay, Those are your, your toothed adsins. I'm going to, uh, someone will grab one side of the skin, another side of the skin, pull them together, and this is where somebody else comes in with the stapler right there. Mm -hmm. And then you just work your way down the incision as they staple it, okay? okay. So well, the surgeon does this, and maybe the scrub tech or the assistant will do the uh, stapling, stapling spine. Mm -hmm. okay. I like doing those. Huh? I like doing those, especially on the head. Yeah. These are DeBakey forceps, again. There's one or two lines across here, and then sideways, there's some more teeth, and they can gra they are gonna grasp the tissue very nicely, but very atraumatically. This is what you're gonna do for internal tissue, organs, blood vessels. They do not rip and tear, but they get a nice, solid grasp on them mm -hmm. so you can manipulate things. But as you can see, those are pretty fine. Those are a little heftier, so we're going for um, finer tissue, but we're not worrying about um, delicate tissue. This is for more delicate tissue, and it's a little longer. Exactly the same tip on the end here. Actually, it's almost identical. It is the same tip right there, but look how long it is. This is where the scrub tech is going to be paying attention to see how deep inside they are to find out what's decide what size. Um, force up to hand to them. We have retractors. This is your double ended, um, oh my goodness, Richardson, double ended Richardson. That's probably a one inch and a one and a half inch, but also the depth. The Richardson is squared off as a rectangle type thing. It's a little curved there, but it's always more rectangular square in that shape. Goulets, I particularly like the goulets, because if you have a layer of skin that you're trying to retract, this kind of folds out a little bit, so it's not gonna be as traumatic to the tissue. Same thing here. This is bigger end for deeper, a little shallower for not so deep. Um, they always come in pairs. Standard for every, every tray is an Army-Navy. I have a deep and a shallow, and they're both a little bit angled so it can catch the tissue inside and pull back. And it's for retracting against each other so you can get in and pull the tissue back. These are actually for laparoscopic cases, and we're going to stick that down into the trocar site and go down deep and try and retract like that so that inside the doctor is going in with his um, scissors and trying to cut through a small, tiny hole, cut through the um, fascia till we get to the peritoneum, and then this will pop in, and then I can just slide my trocars in. Okay. What was the name of those? And S retractor. Oh, okay. <laughs> S retractor. So the, the techs or the scrubbers will be the ones holding those into the, the, the scrub doctor. techs hold them. Yes, the scrub techs hold them. The surgeon places them. Okay, these are my Sen retractors. As you can see, that's dull, and those underneath my fingernail oh, yeah. are sharp. Okay, so we've got one sharp, one dull. Um, 
normally they're the same but we have a sharpened adult and I'm going to pull on the skin okay just barely go under the skin the surgeon will place them and the and the uh, scrub tack will hold those in place to retract the skin work so the surgeon can get in okay these look very similar okay so we have the end piece here and one is straight one is angled okay this is a cerebellar this is a wheat leaner okay pretty much do the same thing they always come in pairs so you put this in the wound then you spread it out you might need a second one on the other side it's a little bit longer incision and holds the whole thing open um, this one over here does the same thing it spreads it out and holds it open um, but again there's a little angle so depending on if it's at the curve of the body or wherever some doctors want it to have the cerebellar they use these a lot for orthopedics as they're going around a hip or a thigh and um, even some of the general ones still like the way this lays better and security clip last one is the security clip okay that's just to hold everything in all your lines for your suction and your um, bovi in place on the field so they don't slide off. If it falls off, it stays off and you have to get a brand new one. That's mm -hmm. it guys. Okay. Very sharp. sharp. We leave those closed at all times so that nobody gets poked with them or they don't grab on any of the towels or drapes. What are they used for just to... Uh, Those work? are for going through the towels when we do a four towel drape across where the incision is going to be. Mm -hmm. yep. to show there you go. <laughs> so that's pretty much the only time you're going to use it or if you're putting on a tourniquet as I'm taking a towel. If I take the towel the scrub tech's going to come and put this around here and she will put a towel to hold that in place okay. and then the drapes will come up around that. Okay. Okay, so that's something that's going to perforate because it will perforate but once it perforates it's no longer sterile. Mm -hmm. So then I put my drape up over that and cover it all up but it's got that towel to be a lining protector. Okay, we went through the Kellys. These have two straight Kellys. When we count, we don't differentiate between the curved and the straight, but, and again, straight is usually um, for if you have to clamp something off somewhere, we rarely use, we don't hardly ever use the straight ones, but we keep them there. This is an abdominal hyster tray, I believe, yes. And so this is a, they have payons. Remember, we have Kellys and Mayos. Here we have tonsils. And now we have. Where's my payons? That's my payon. It's heavier than the tonsil. See? And then this one again can get bigger and bigger, it gets longer and slightly heavier. This is a new one that only comes in the GYN tray. These are Haney retractors and they have lines that go this way and then they also have a tooth. They have one tooth in them. Those tooth are very distinctive, you can see that. We also have Valentines. Valentines have a different curve. See the lines are differently and they go that way. Some doctors were trained on Valentines and when they do a hyster they might want to have this and it still has a tooth on the end but it's Haney Valentine. Everybody uses a straight Valentine. If you are doing an abdominal hyster or vag hyster, they use a straight valentine around the cervix. Some things have one purpose. This is what this does. Mm -hmm. It's straight, goes up, around, and cut, and you clamp onto the um, 
tissue around the cervix and they use a knife and they cut it away from the cervix, they ladder cuff, they cut it away from the cervix. That's what that one instrument is for. Here's some more Alice's in here. So you can see the Alice, but now you can also see we have very long Alice's. And the teeth on these are actually still pretty good too. So that is a very long Alice, long Babcock. So in case you have somebody that's very large that needs to get their uterus out and they're, we're gonna leave the ovaries, we're gonna pull up on the tubes and separate everything apart. Longer Cokers, longer. These are again, more Hager um, needle holders. Jorgensen, Jorgensen scissors have one function, cut around the cervix, okay? Mm. Never seen it used for anything else. Mm. It goes in there and they just are able to cut right around, okay? But you have to take a bite with the Valentine first. The clamp, clamp clamps down and then we have Jorgies. And remember I talked about long and short of it. Here is your long curved mayo, your straight curved mayo, and your long um, Metz scissors. This is your average size. And your average size. But again, when you're in the belly, there's a deep dark hole, so you need to have things longer. Mm -hmm. When you have a uterus, it's slippery, so you might need to grab it. This is a double tooth tenaculum. Mm -hmm. Okay? And literally, you just go in and take a big giant bite out of it and grab it. And that's all it's for. It's not going to stay, you don't care if it poke holes, but you're going to grab that sucker. Okay? I believe, oh, ribbon retractor, you didn't have that. So we have a ribbon retractor This bends and they can put it in and they can pull the tissue back. Normally they do bend it. I don't want to bend it any more than it already gets bent. And a bigger Richardson retractor. And everything in there is the same. Okay, that's it. That's your abdominal history tray. Okay. Like I say, this is all pretty much the same instruments. If you can